All right, hey, we're live. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm John. Hey. I got Victoria with me this morning. morning. And uh, sorry, no Ted today. Ted's uh, Ted's had this incredible coughing thing. He just like has this coughing fit thing going on. And uh, the poor guy. We haven't done too many videos over the last couple weeks just because poor Ted's got a cough. So, anyways, so Ted's not on this morning, but uh, but I am, and I brought my lovely assistant Victoria this morning. And so we're going to talk a little bit, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, hand casting and how to get started. Um, we're kind of making our way around uh, the new Webinar Jam studio. When I, when I first set this uh, broadcast up a couple of weeks ago, I wanted to see if Webinar Jam would set up uh, a true multi-session. And at the time, it had a few challenges with getting it going. And I think most of that was just because they were still working to get ready for the final version for release. And um, today, looking through everything, it looks pretty. It looks pretty darn good. So, um, just was going through all the controls this morning and uh, the setups, and quite a few things have changed since the last time I opened it just a couple weeks ago. So, um, we managed to get a pre-release copy of um, Webinar Jam Studio to check out. And uh, like I said, at the time, they were still working on a few things. So, this looks super good today. And um, I invited Victoria over to kind of come play with me for a little bit, and um, we're going to talk a little bit about hand casting and kind of getting started for it, because I know many of you have asked Ed and I about it and some of the different pieces to uh, to getting going. So I just want to talk a little bit about some of the basics of it today. So this was kind of twofold, to give Webinar GM Studio a, a quick run through and then to talk a little bit about um, hand casting and starting out. Victoria, of course, is going to be great at helping with that today, because she's been through our class. How cool is that? Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So she'll probably have some great input on it as well. Um, one thing I noticed that's really cool in this, and of course uh, we see Webinar Jam Studio is playing a very, very key component in hand casting, because um, many people today want to do webinars, right? And what's one of one of the top platforms for that is the one we're on today, Webinar Jam Studio. And um, you guys may have noticed over the last couple of days that Ted and I have been featured in the Webinar Jam Studio launch, along with our good friend David Hunt. So if you've been following that and have, have, have had a chance to watch the videos, and I'll put that up on the pop-in too, um, if not, but if you have had a chance to watch the videos, you've seen us and you've seen us with, you've seen some of the experts. It's nice to be seen with the experts. And uh, hand casting is about ta talking about being with people of expert status that you can interview and gain your own expert status quickly. So it's just nice to even be seen in little snippets with people like uh, Brendan Bouchard and um, Jason Flavlian, Ed Dale. Those are just some of the folks that are, Anik Singhal, some of the folks that are in the Webinar GM Studio uh, launch sequence. So if you get a chance to watch those videos, and I'll put a pop-up on uh, a little later for those of you who are here joining us so that you can see um, how to get to those if you'd like. So I see we've got Andy with us this morning. Good morning, Andy, uh, if you get a chance. Uh, say hi in the chat, and anybody else who pops in, feel free to chat over here and say hello. It's nice to have you with us. So um, anyway, so with no further ado, one other thing that I want to show that I thought was really cool, you know, I've been waiting to look at the new control panel. I kind of thought the control panel was going to be something a little bit different than what it is, but um, I do like it a lot because one thing that it does well is... Hang on, i got to get to it here a second. One thing that it does very nicely, oh, well, somehow I lost my Webinar GM control panel there. There we go. There we go. Well, can you see that, Victoria? Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Awesome. Well, one thing, cool. one thing the control panel does very nicely is if you've got an assistant who watches your chat as you're going along and keeps track of it, and you can re-invite the registrants, and you can kind of see it here, uh, we've got Andy joining us live this morning. Thanks for being here, Andy, again. Um, and you can see we had 33 total people registered for this little session we're doing today. Um, but I can send a last-minute email from here, a last-minute SMS, to, to try to get the uh, crowd in that we've invited. So give them another chance to be here. But it's great because you got your chat and your Q&A and everything all in one place, which I really, really like. Um, I had hoped that it would have some of the control panel aspects here so that we could actually um, help, you know, for guys like me who actually help people present on their webinar jams. Um, but that is not part of this. 
That's okay, though. So, hey, look who just showed up. It's Ted. More Ted. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. So, yeah. yeah, everything's just, good. Good. Well, it's, uh, just, we're just kind of showing the uh, control panel and stuff this morning. we got Andy joining us here. Um, so, anyways, hey, let's talk a little bit about hand casting because that's what we were going to do. And um, I just went blurry here for the moment. Oh, that's that's my there we go. Ooh, no, it's my camera is playing up on me this morning. Um, we had that happen a couple times. But, um, yeah, so I just want to talk a little bit. Um, lots of people have asked us about hand casting and kind of what are the things that I need to do to prepare for it and get started. So I thought that Ted and I could talk a little bit about that today. I'm glad you were joining. And as long as you can hold up without coughing, we'll, be, I'll let, we'll play along. Um, so anyways, so... Kind of starting out, you know, like I said earlier, obviously lots of people doing webinar webinars today, um, interviews, oh gosh, any number of things that are recorded. Um, some people are even doing Zoom sessions, you know, for their coaching groups, and they like to make it into like a paid uh, course on iTunes. And so the great thing about handcasting, as we see it, is it's the ultimate repurposing system. Being able to repurpose your Hangouts on air in whatever form they take place in, into podcasts. Because that way you're taking advantage of all the search power of Google and taking advantage of all the uh, search power, too, of iTunes and um, the ability for people to pick up and listen to your podcasts. Anything you'd like to add to that, Ted? Uh, that's right. did it right when poor Ted's coughing. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was what i like to add. Um, no, we, we've got we developed a system, so without m too much extra work, you can really boost your power up. Yes, you really can boost your power up. And, you know, there's a lot of pieces to this that we're still working on adding. We're working uh, in Kindle for um, our transcripts and being able to turn those into Kindle books. And we're also working on um, some really cool stuff with Facebook and Instagram. So would you agree that those are some pretty powerful places to be hanging out these days, right? Not bad. Yep. So we're ultimately going to combine all of that into the hand casting formula. Because what are the things that we do here aside from we're creating video that we could then turn into um, blog posts. So we're doing a little video blogging. We're doing some uh, transcripting. We can take these interviews or whatever we're doing, webinars, and transcript, have them transcribed and put them on Kindle or put them in multiple different places for electronic print. And um, then... We take a lot of pictures inside of the Hangouts, don't we? Or at least Ted does. He's picture. He's camera crazy. Oh, now I said it. I'm in trouble. <laughs> Here comes the camera. Okay. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. I take the pictures because nobody else does. Do I ever get my picture out in the front? No, hardly ever. No, but you know, people don't, people underestimate the power of the photos and um, and the different graphics that you can have both. Uh, inside your Hangout and in your podcast, and we'll talk a little bit about the podcast graphics too in a second. But inside your Hangout, you know, obviously we're all here today. You're going to have some great guests on. You want to get some photos of that for posterity. So you want to take as many photos as you can um, while you're in your Hangout. Those are great fodder for Instagram, for Twitter, for Facebook, um, and Google Plus because they need a special stream for photos. Now, wonder why that is. I wonder why that is exactly. So I mean, there's some there's some very very nice things here, and um, you know we're talking too about taking advantage of as many aspects as we can of Google Plus. You know, we're talking about taking advantage of events. We want to post our uh, webinar jams into events more um, as well, because Google loves its own properties. You know, YouTube and Google Plus, etc. So. That's kind of the basics. The basics of hand casting or hand casting <clears throat> that um, that we're starting out with. And so, next thing that you want to be taking a look at is, okay, from this point you've decided, hey, I'd like to have a hangout on an air show, or I'm going to have a webinar series, or whatever that might look like. Maybe you're going to have a telesummit series. You're going to have uh, a ton of guests um, once a month, and that's going to be all of your material for your uh, podcast going through <laughs> that next period of time, right? So, what you what? <laughs> there we go. Here it starts. Mm. See, I mentioned, I mentioned pictures, and this is this is what I get. All right, all right now. <laughs> so on on iTunes. Um, now I lost my train of thought. Thank you very much. 
No, that's funny. So um, on iTunes, you want to start thinking about, okay, well, I'm, this is what I'm planning. Uh, so from there, how does that fit into iTunes? What, what would my show look like over there? And what would the graphics look like? And how can I stand out from the crowd there? So what I would suggest is, depending on what your niche is, going over to iTunes, taking a peek through and looking at the, um, the different podcasts that are in that genre, and see what kind of graphics you could create for your show that would allow you to stand out from the pack and what title might be appropriate, what, um, what sub headline might be appropriate for you and go do your research and then the next thing to figure out is gee what's going to be the most appropriate time um, frame for that podcast? Is it going to be a 10 minute podcast? Now I'd say that if it's something you're going to do by yourself 10 minutes is probably a great place to start. Or if you're new to doing Hangouts on Air, um, again, 10, 10 minutes is going to be a really good place to start. If you're going to have guests, um, you're going to want at least 20, 30 minutes, possibly even an hour if you're going to have guests, right? Because it takes a little bit of time when we have guests on. So um, keep that in mind. Make the time appropriate for how many people you're going to have. 10 minutes is going to be short to have a guest. Although I know, I've known people who've done a 10-minute show with a guest, but um, you really got to get down to it. Yeah, and but remember, that was me and you, and I didn't like you at the time. There you go. <laughs> well, no, I know some other people who do 10-minute shows with guests, and um, it, it works pretty well. I mean, it really lets you jump right into a particular snippet of, uh, of topic, but it really doesn't let you explore that. So you want to keep that length in mind. Um, the other thing that I was going to say about the length is they say the average person's commute time to work is about 30 minutes. So keeping that in mind, I'd say a real safe bet is the 30 minute, 20 to 30 minute time frame. Um, and that's why I mention it for a, um, you know, for an interview type of series. Um, it's going to be easy to keep up with and it's going to be easy to, to do and a reasonable length, right? Yeah, and don't worry, I can hear the cogs turning already saying, that, when am I going to be able to do this? I've got to do it every week to get these podcasts done. Have you? Have you really got to have um, a time slot? Or do you think you can give up perhaps one day and do a lot of them? And that's what people do. In fact, um, lots of the big podcasters like the John Lee Dumases, the Pat Flynn's, they take Monday and they'll pop out eight episodes. So they'll do eight hour episodes in a day. And we've done that too as well. We've done telesummits where we've done um, 12, 14, eight, <laughs> 18 half hour episodes, right? And that was before um, things were set up on, uh, on Hangouts on Air. The minute, the length that you could do at the time was like four hours. Now you can do unlimited length of time. So you could record and record and record without having to change and open a new hangout. So we did that when it was not the easiest thing in the world to do with multiple guests. So now it's pretty simple. Much, much simpler than it was before. So keep that in mind as well. Um, many, many things that you can podcast and redo the uh, redo your HOAs. If you're going to do an HOA show, you want to also take advantage of the, the graphics and events. So you want to look at other people's graphics. Um, try not to make things too small. You know, it kind of kills me, Ted, when we see the graphics that are very, very small, they're difficult to read. Um, try to make them readable. Try to get the important points in your, in your headline banner of what you're going to be covering and a title, etc. But uh, don't make it too small that people can't read it. And I will say, when John says go and look at others, that doesn't mean go, look, and copy. That means just get an idea. Say, yeah. oh, this one looks good. Then improve on it. Don't steal it. Just improve on it. And then it's yours. Make yourself, you know, stand out from the crowd. Thanks for adding that, Ted, because uh, it is common for folks to just go and go, ooh. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> So, yeah, take a look at what other people have done because, right, success leads clues. You may see something you like, and you can model after that. Um, obviously, keep your branding in mind. Um, if you don't have your Google Plus 
page set up, a YouTube page set up, uh, that should be the first thing you do. Get a great story, um, make sure your abouts are good, that you've got links to your website, that um, if people come looking for you on Google+, Plus, they can find you and find everything about you. Uh, we often say that our calling card is Google+. Plus. If you go over and look at my profile on Google+, Plus or look at Ted's, um, you'll see that you know, it tells pretty much everything about us, our story, how we got started, um, what things, um, what links we have to our websites and, uh, and social media. So you can find us from there anywhere and interact uh, with us in a place that you prefer versus where we prefer even. So that's important too, to kind of hit people where they are. So you want to think about that too when you're advertising your show. Where are the places where your clients, customers, perfect customers hang out so that you can, um, you can publicize and advertise your show to them too. So that's another thing to kind of keep in mind. And um, always try to figure out how you're going to get them to your email list. You know, are you going to offer as part of your podcast, part of your hangout on air, some kind of membership site or something that they can easily sign up to and, um, and you know, be pulled into your funnel? So that's another thing to keep in mind. Just bribe them. One way or the other, just bribe them. Come there over you to your website. Sign up to the email because you're going to get something free and uh, something of value. Don't put in old stuff because that will do the reverse. Find something that's unique and also on topic of what you are actually doing. Exactly. So, um, you know, I was going to say, uh, I, know, I know Andy's out there. I wonder if anybody's got any questions so far. If you do, feel free to pop them in. We'd be glad to, glad to uh, cover anything that you've got additional questions on. So, um, yeah, so, you know, getting the right things right up front is important. And um, we, did our, we did our intros and outros. We went to Fiverr. We found somebody who was, who was great, who was in the broadcasting industry. And they did our intro videos and outro videos and our intro and outros for our podcast. Um, we even combined the two together. So we've got the, the um, podcast intros over the video intros for the video. And um, we've got our podcast intros and outros on the audio. So it worked out really, really well. And um, it's so cool because, you know, you, for people just getting started out, you don't really have to know everything about everything. I mean, at first, I really didn't know how to do the scripting. For that, I just had an expert do it, and he did an awesome job. And he, he in the outro, referred them to our uh, Twitter feed and Facebook feed for the, um, for the show. So anything you guys would like to add? Victoria, you want to say anything? About class or anything? Ted muted me. Yes, because you were making too much noise. <laughs> I wasn't typing and, and I wasn't using any foul language. I was just listening. <laughs> That's okay. And you know, <laughs> this, this is another thing though. Um, if you're going to have guests on, make sure they know the rules. You know, that, um, that they know how to uh, mute themselves. Because how many times are we on, right, Ted, that people don't know how to mute themselves? So, you know, you want to make sure that if you have multiple guests that they know how to run the controls. Um, another thing that we do quite commonly in getting started for the webinars and everything is doing the trailers, right? We do the trailers with our guests to make sure that they know exactly, you know, what's expected of them, that we could do a little trailer of what they're going to be talking about, if it's going to be um, uh, a guest that's doing a webinar for us, and we'll use that trailer for the webinar. So, it's, uh, okay. Andy's spun. I'm I'm reading the chat over here. Yeah, well, it's great to have you with us, Andy. Um, sorry that our first couple broadcasts got delayed. And at the end, stick around. We'll we'll have you pop in and say hello. So don't go away this morning. Um, so, anyways, yeah. I so I asked you, Victoria, what would you like to add to this? Anything about the process? Because you've been through class with us and everything else. Well, just when if you um, are running a podcast or um, sorry a a handcast and you know, like you've got a couple of people in there and then say you've got more than one presenter, it's good if one of them is there just to do the questions so that you can concentrate on the presentation and, you know, because people are firing their questions out and it can be quite distracting looking at the thing at the side. Absolutely can be. In fact, that's one of the things we say quite frequently, especially if you're expecting a big group to try to get an assistant to help you. And um, that's why I showed the control panel earlier. 
it's going to make it a lot easier for somebody who is assisting you to keep track of the chat, to invite guests that maybe haven't showed up yet, um, and it's going to it's going to help pretty significantly. So also a good tip there would be to if you find that you're getting overwhelmed with the questions coming on, just turn it off. Just say I'm turning it off for the time being because we need some to cover these important points, and right. then. And I was going to say, in fact, I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. Excuse me. It's coffee. Um, yeah, so if I, you can, they've got a button here in Webinar Jam where you can enable or shut off the chat box. And uh, so I just did that now. I shut off the chat. So you can turn that on, turn that off. And it makes a significant difference because if you find that people are getting a little too chatty and maybe getting a little out of control with it, or especially in one case we had, we had kind of two sides, and they kind of disseminated on us during the middle of a uh, of a webinar. So you want to keep that in mind. But um, if Webinar Jam isn't your system for doing your original broadcast, you want to determine what is. Is it going to be 22 social? Is it going to be easy webinar? You know what might what might that be? Um, or is it going to be just ha a hangout event? Um, you know that's something to start thinking about, and um, whether. If you're doing it as a hangout event, are you going to use Showcase with it? Um, because Showcase allows you to put up a lot of different things that you'll be talking about as part of it. So you want to just be thinking about all of that, um, all of that stuff as well. I know we originally started our broadcast recorded, and um, now we're looking at going live. But you know, live has a whole different group of issues with it because you got to be able to commit to a schedule for doing a live broadcast and have it on a regular time frame. And that was a little tough for us to do kind of early on. So, um, plus, you want to have also uh, the first thing that you get into with your podcast is new and noteworthy on, um, on iTunes. So, you want to be able to, on iTunes, have four to six, maybe even eight uh, episodes kind of in your, in your wheelhouse ready to go so that you're, um, you can take advantage of new and noteworthy for the first six to eight weeks. Because if they come over and they say, man, I like this podcast from John and Ted, or I like this podcast from Victoria or Andy or uh, Jonathan, and um, what have they get to watch after the first episode, right? You want to have them have a couple extra episodes to watch and, uh, and comment on and see. Because if they like you, you want to keep them liking you and keep them downloading more of your stuff, and you'll stay you know, in the top level a lot longer. Julie, who worked with us, um, that was one thing that, Remember her initially, Ted? Oh my gosh, she called like the night before she was about to put up her podcast and said, "But I'm going to put up all my episodes all at once." I said, "Yeah, so you can make more, right? How cool is that?" But um, she didn't want to get her episodes up all at once. She was all really nervous about that. Um, she said, "Gosh, that was a lot of work, and now it's all going up at one time." But at the same time, I said, "Well, if somebody likes your first episode, what are they going to go see?" And the answer was. Crickets, nothing. There's nothing to go see if they if they like my first episode. If I don't put up the rest of them, so she did that and uh, she went from 2,000 downloads her first month to now she's up 11,000, 12,000 downloads now. Um, five months later, so how cool was that, right? Mm. Great traffic awesome. from iTunes. You want to take advantage of it. Um, anything John you guys would like to add? Yeah. yeah, Jonathan has just put. We don't see anything here. Is this pre-recorded? It doesn't say anything like chat disabled. That would be important. <clears throat> oh, um, can you? But you can see the video, right? I think you can see the video. It was just that he couldn't see. Couldn't uh, see the chat. chat. But I think if you'd have found that, if you'd have um, gone onto the chat, tried to type anything, that you wouldn't have been able to um, actually be able to type in there. Yeah, because we can see it. You know, if you're going to disable um, chat, you just tell people the chat's going to be disabled. So right, and I did, know. and I disabled it for a second so they could see what that looked like. So maybe maybe you were in that frame, Jonathan, where the chat was disabled, but it's back on now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Jonathan, same, same goes to you afterwards. If you just hang about, we'll get you in. Um, you yeah. Know, and then you can, if, if we got what we thought you meant wrong, then you can tell us. Yeah, and, and like I said, my, my goal today was um, twofold. You know, just kind of we're trying to get our, a handle on the Webinar Jam controls, the new ones, see what they look like, um, see how things go, 
uh, with that. And um, the other thing I'll add here, because I put this up uh, this morning, but if you haven't had a chance to see our uh, videos yet as part of the Webinar Jam launch, um, this is where you can go find them. So you'll see my picture down in the lower left-hand corner. Not a bad group of people to be seen with, you know? All right, we were talking about that yesterday. So hopefully they'll get Ted's picture in a couple of these, but um, you, did a, you did show up in the video, so that was cool. That was very cool. So, uh, you know, and that's, and that's really all of this, you know. I mean, um, it would be nice to have a little more of a talking part, but, uh, hey, it's kind of hard to compete with experts who their whole lives are on webinars, and like Jason Flatley and Brendan Burchard and Onyx Singal, and, but it's a, it's a heck of a nice group to be seen as part of. Well, so, that ma right? it makes a lot of difference. You know, people will associate you with the people that you hang about with, and that was something I was taught very mm -hmm. early on. You know, um, basically somebody turned around, and you know, I wouldn't use this terminology, but if you want to be a loser, hang about with losers. If you want to make success, hang about with people that are successful. And there you have it, right from Ted. So it's true. It's very true. So if you want to see that, and in fact, that was one of the things I think that was a key to our earlier success. And I think that's one of the one of the reasons that we put hand casting together because it kind of works that through its process. And that was that you know we asked people to be part of our show, didn't we, Ted? Early on, I asked to interview different folks, and they agreed. Many of them, and and I think it's true today. Many of them didn't know anything about hangouts on air, um, and probably still don't. So, you know, understand that when you ask people, they, they may have never been on a Hangout on air. They may have watched one from YouTube and thought it was cool, but um, they've probably never been in the panel and they've probably never recorded one themselves. So they don't know how to uh, act, behave. Um, they may or may not have the right equipment for it. So that's one of the reasons that we added in the trailers and everything to that process for ourselves. But you're going to maybe want to do something like that yourself. So keep in mind that many folks you'd think have been in Hangouts you're going to be surprised. I continue to be surprised on a daily basis when I go to do trailers for other people that um, most folks still haven't done them. So, right, keep that and, in mind. Andy Tom is telling us off because uh, he says you need to uh, show the names of those people in the picture. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I don't even know some of the names of the folks in the yeah. picture. <laughs> I was looking the other day um, to see who to see who they are. Some of them are. Some of them are folks that we know. Uh, you know, Ed Dale is there. Um, Bronson. Yeah, Russell Bronson. There's a couple people that um, that I wasn't aware of, and then I knew their names when I when I saw. I said, "Oh, that's who that is." So you know, but there were some that I you know I've never heard of. So. But they they are adding the names um, to the people that are speaking now. In yeah, the they are adding the names. Yesterday's video. They, they were adding, and I think Website. that's probably the comments they got from people, so they added it in. Exactly. But do we need to add our names in? Or do enough people know us? I, I, I'm hoping people know me. I'm, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm kind of hard to miss. Fit right in, oh. bald head, beard. Yeah. <laughs> so, is there any questions? <laughs> Andy, Jonathan, Ray. I've got a question about the marker's answer. What's that? Dana. I see Dana's joined us. Yeah. Morning, Dana. Sorry, Victoria. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I've got a, I've got a question about the mark as answer. You know, like, what, what is that? Can you demo it or something like About what? Mark as answer. Sorry. Oh, mark that. as answered. Um, yeah, you can do that. You can mark things as an as an answer, yeah. Um, you can also, I, I believe you can still do it on the other side. Mark it as a question. So you've got a checkbox yeah. that you can click to mark it as a question, and then. Well, just I, so you know that you've answered that question if you've got a big pile of them coming through. Yeah, that's a new thing that I haven't really seen yet. So one thing that we can do that's new is um, I can invite you guys as speakers. So I'm going to do that because since yeah. we're kind of nearing the end now, so I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this out. You guys can see how this works at home. 
So I'm going to invite Jonathan in. So I just clicked that. And um, I'm going to invite Andy over. Actually, I'll invite you all. So, Dana, if you want to comment on something, I'd be glad to invite you as well. Um, that's the only way that I can do that. So, like I said, if you... in the control panel. Uh, oh, did we lose Jonathan and Andy? Because they're not showing up as... Uh, oh, here we go. In. Hey, there we go. Hi, guys. <laughs> they come out of the... Interesting. So they come yeah. out of the attendees list when you come over. So that's pretty cool. So we're trying to get our head around a, how a couple of different things work over here. But um, anyways, I hope this was, uh, was good for you guys this morning. I'm going to just stop the broadcast now. Um, thanks for joining us. Yep, thank you. And uh, Dana, if you still want to come, I'd be glad to invite you up in to the panel. Hello, Jonathan's come back there. So. Okay, let me let me see. I'll, I'll leave it on a second here. We'll try inviting Jonathan over. Oh, I can do that. Invite and invite. Cool. Uh, that is interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Well, no, I mean, I'm sitting here, and just all of a sudden the screen goes black, and then the thing to go on a regular Google Hangout comes up. And I thought, okay, now what's wrong? You know. Nothing, <laughs> nothing. Another glitch. You know, you should give a person a hint when that's going to happen. <laughs> you know, if it's going to be a radical screen change, you know, because first thing I thought was, God, I've got more tech problems. You know? Ah, interesting. Uh, so that's... Well, Dana. So that's good. You know, we're trying to we're trying to get the um, the idea of what happens with some of us too, Andy. So yeah, and I'll all this stuff. So this honest. is good. I haven't had a chance to play with it yet, so I don't even know what questions to ask. I'm just <laughs> watching everything right now, trying to get you know my head around it. I I know for a fact that probably. It won't be my platform of choice simply because I don't have a business. I've got nothing to sell. I, I don't do there's, you know, I don't really engage in what this product was meant to do. But mm. I want to know about it so that the people in my group, if they've got questions about it, I can say yes, it does this, or here's some video to go watch to see what it does, or that type of thing. You know, because cool. I, I, I run a more online help group than I do any type of merchandising yeah. or anything. Yeah. I was going to say, what, what this was developed for was actually to market your products to the people because Hangouts on Air wasn't exactly um, designed for marketing purposes. So that was why this platform, uh, as some of the others, were made or, um, or came into existence because it gives you a chance to be able to use it more to sell products mm -hmm. um, and use it as coaching as well like um, many of the others but on here you've got the ability that you can show an offer direct them to that offer without them um, coming off the actual hangout so yeah, you know, there, there's quite a few advantages there is and I was going to say originally when we were doing telesummits Andy um, you know, we, we kind of had our list of things that we like to see in a in a product that could do this, and then all of a sudden, out came webinar jam, and it was like our full list of everything that we'd spec'd out. So yeah, we, we yeah. jumped on it right away. It worked out great for what we wanted to do. Cause yeah, could, I mean, Google comes up with great ideas, but sure. when it comes to marketing those ideas, and they implementing them sometimes. absolutely, you know, I mean, <laughs> that, that showcase app, it is ideal, except once you turn it on, you can't turn it off during the presentation. It's there the whole time. Right, it's there the whole time. You know, I, I love this, but this pop-out thing where you, you know, I can go look at it if I want to, and if I don't, I just ignore it. You just ignore it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I wanted to kind of show that because it, it is one of the key features that we loved, you know, early on. We said, gosh, if we have multiple guests with different things that they want to, you know, if they want to give away a freebie or whatever, we can have it all lined up. You can have multiple offers already in the can, ready to go, and bam, out it goes, and all set. And so, even even if you haven't, you can actually do one on the fly there and then. You know, if, if you suddenly say, "I'll tell you what, I'm going to make a bonus up for you," you can quickly make one up and then send them to wherever you want. Mm. Yeah, 
And I, and I was going to say, too, you know, you guys will see we do Hangouts in multiple different ways. You know, sometimes we'll do it as an event. Sometimes uh, you'll see us more doing things from 22 Social. That's like a plan for future because it's great to kind of build your list and get, you know, more folks on your email list. You're going to see us doing things a lot of different ways. You might see us doing it with Webinar Jam or you might see us doing it with Easy Webinar Automated. You'll see a lot of different things. And uh, Ever Webinar is going to be interesting. We haven't seen that yet. But um, it's going to be the automated solution that goes along with Webinar Jam. Yeah. So it, it, yeah, I like a full toolbox. I mean, I do you know, too. <laughs> Got lots of things to use for different different purposes, and the you know it kind of starts to come down to okay, well, what purpose is most appropriate for what? And one thing Webinar Jam we found early on wasn't good for was coaching because it's hard to make your sessions really really private, mm -hmm. and um, you know, business hangouts on air lets you do it pretty well because it deletes that post in Google that, Plus. Yeah. Um, if it's got to be uber private, you know, you can uh, start your hangout from YouTube Live. Yeah. But it's surprising, you know, so many people. If we were to run the poll, if we had a huge crowd, you'd see that probably 30% of the folks that were on watching us um, probably have still never recorded a hangout of their own. Mm. So that's one of the things we found early on is that. Everybody thought Webinar Jam or Easy Webinar was just the thing to use for everything, and it's not. There's no, no one size fits all here. That's true. And you know, one thing I keep telling people, I say, you know, don't go on there too quick. Learn your interface so you know where things are. So if trouble happens, you know what to do about it because trouble is going to happen. I don't care what platform you're using. Sooner or later, there's going to be a glitch. You need to know how to handle it. Before it happens, you know, don't absolutely read, don't don't get something one week and three days later you're on air trying to hold a, a hangout or a webinar. You got to practice this thing, and you know, you, there's work to do. And so many people don't look at it that way. They oh, I've got a marketing platform. I can sell my ebook, and you know, off they go to the races and they fall flat on their face, and then they blame the platform. There you go. I you like know, I like you already, Andy. <laughs> I like yeah, your thinking. Awesome. You know, uh, we say that all the time. You got to yeah. test, test, test until you know you're, you're comfortable with. You can recover from things. We've seen so many things blow up on people so badly they never even mm -hmm. tested them ahead of time. They just figured, oh, it's, it's easy. I can just push the button and do it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it I was going to say that that's why we've been so busy and the times we have got people out of trouble. Um, literally, they're live and they've had a problem. They've contacted John or myself, and um, you know, like John, will quickly shoot in. A lot of time, it's in John's time frame more than mine, and he's sorted them out. So, you know, been, they've been very, very grateful. Yeah. I even have new things happen to me every time. Like a couple of weeks ago, I did one. The um, YouTube live video wouldn't stream, so we went for 30 minutes, um, and, it, and all of a sudden, I noticed that that wasn't streaming. Because I was working with a, a client and I couldn't see the um, the initial video, he didn't give it to me to start. And I'm going searching because everybody's saying they're not seeing it, and YouTube never started streaming that video. But the great thing was, we were able to. Once I found out, we stopped. We started to re-record, and that uh, broadcast came live later. So they managed to stitch and paste them together. But what an interesting uh, thing to have happen. Yeah. And, and early on, we had our YouTube videos wouldn't show up for like two or three days, and then all of a sudden they pop up. So well, I started one yesterday and got an error message I, I've never seen before, and it said could not reach broadcast server. Try again in 15 minutes. I've never had that happen, you know. And I've been doing private recordings, you know, for over a year now. You know, and I thought I'd seen every me error message that Google had. You know, and like, all right, what's this about now? But apparently, Chrome was doing an update at that very time for the Chrome box. You know, the the box and books are on different update schedules. Well, it just so happens it, it was the Chrome box. You know, I went over to my Chrome book and it went right through. It was just the strangest thing. You know, and then somebody else that was going through and said, "I tried to and I couldn't get in. I couldn't find the thing." I said, "No, because it wasn't there. I had to reconstruct it." You know, and then go over to my other computer. Now, I'm glad. 
Yeah, I was going to say, I'm glad you're mentioning this stuff, I, and I'm still continuing to record just so you guys know because this is all good, so I'm, I, I haven't stopped yet. But um, one thing that we run into quite frequently is somebody who will try to come in on one browser and can't get on two, or like you said, there's an issue and so it's not recording. You can try another browser, and this works with, in, on the PC, it works with Internet Explorer. It works with um, Safari, Firefox, and Chrome. Right, so on the Mac, one thing that I discovered just the other day, which I didn't know, I didn't even know you could get Firefox for the Mac, but uh, hey, you learn something new every day. But Safari and Chrome works great with, but Firefox, some uh, one of our friends came up and he was missing like his apps on the left hand side, so Firefox didn't have all the apps showing up. So stick with stick with, or if you're gonna if you're gonna be working on a particular system. Make sure you try all the browsers and see how it works with that. That's another thing that's part of the testing process of, you know, getting started. You want to know what to be aware of if things go wrong. If your guest's having trouble coming in on Chrome, see if they can come in on Firefox or Internet Explorer or something else. So that, that's a great thing. I'm glad you brought that up. Anything else you guys would like to add? <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, Andy, uh, take it you know that you can check the status of Google on the uh, apps that are stuck on in the chat yeah I've got I've got it bookmarked but unfortunately mm. I've added something to the uh, my browser bar and it had kicked that bookmark off the bar down to the little double arrow thing you know and I was looking for it and couldn't find it because it wasn't where I'm normally used to seeing it on the browser bar and then I'm like okay where where we go you know I, because I'm a great one for, you know, like I've got 17 tags open. And, and I've got like, what, 12 folders on my browser bar. And then each one of the folders got, you know, oh, wow. stuff, you know, categorized under it. And I, and I couldn't remember which folder I had it in. And then that whole folder got moved off the browser bar because I put something in front of it and it fell off the back end of the thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny. I'm guilty of that, too. I'll always have, like, a whole bunch of tabs open all over the place, and um, that, that brings up yet another important point for people who are kind of just starting with Hangouts, uh, and that is reboot before you get started <laughs> because you're going to have all that stuff along the top. Just bring up what you want um, to concentrate on. So uh, just trying to add all these things as you're mentioning because you're bringing up some great stuff there, Andy. Thank you. Yeah, well, I, 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 I try and shut down completely if, I, if I'm going to be doing hosting a Hangout. I shut all my apps, everything down, be shut the computer off, restart it, start the browser, and the Hangout. That's the only thing I try and work with, you know, unless I have to open the site to show them something. It, just, yeah. it, it does better, you know, especially, if, if, you, especially if you're on a Wi-Fi. Yeah. I'm I'm a big proponent of if there's any way you can get away from Wi-Fi and get on a wire, do it because it definitely works. Yeah, I see so many people with bad bandwidth trying to be on Wi-Fi, and mm -hmm. you can and even good bandwidth, and you can tell because they start to skip. Different things happen with the images. And you can you can just see that it's not um it's not going to broadcast well because Wi-Fi has got that variable signal, and depending mm -hmm. on who's using it, you're going to be higher at one point. You're going to cut off later and um, we always tell everybody to uh, um, that's a very good question Dana what do we consider to be good bandwidth we've kind of found the sweet spot to be like right around 10 10 uh, 10 download 10 <laughs> upload if you can if you can uh, get to that that's kind of like that'd be nice one of the one of the lo I know right Australia <laughs> like Victoria you know it's it's terrible for the poor Australians they just got it so rough over there um, yeah, so, and it's surprising, you know, how many folks, even here where we have really high speed internet connection by broadband uh, cable, a lot of it you might have like a, a 30 some download speed, but a horrible upload speed. So it really kind of yeah. gets you in the end. I would add to that that Google says that um, if there's a one to one, then it's sort of like two, and if you've got a whole panel full, no lower than five. Yeah, yeah, that's what they say. So, I mean, 10, 10, 10, 10, 5, because you want to have some upload speed, too. That's, that's kind of ideal. I don't know uh, what Australia is, but it's... 
usually around yeah, six one. one. You know, so it's ama it's almost amazing it's Victoria fun. can appear with us at all. <laughs> I've got my Ethernet cable on. But it's, it's, but it's improving, you know. Um, internet speeds seem to be improving everywhere. It's it's interesting as we go on. We you know we're always asking people to speed test, go to like speedtest.net and run their speeds. And, yeah. Um, it, there, it's improving everywhere. So there, there's what I do is I go to speedtest.net and testmy.net because one runs with. Java one doesn't run with Java, you, so you get, you know, different numbers. Like if I go to speed testing, I get numbers like you know I've got like a hundred down, and I've got like forty two up. I go to test my net, and I've got like fifty two down, and I've got seven up. Oh wow, and, that's a big difference. You know, that it's a huge difference, and I just, uh, in fact, a friend recommended a third one earlier this morning. I'm going to go over and check yeah, it let, out. Yeah, let me you know, know if you uh, if you have it, uh, post it for us. I'd love to have that to know. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, it, it's on my other tower computer. I've got I've got three computers sitting here in front of me, and it's on the mail system. I only use Windows Live Mail on one. I use my Chromebook for almost everything, hmm. and so I can't run Windows Live Mail. On the Chromebook, you know, because it's Chrome. Yeah. You no, know, but I'll, I'll, I'll. It's in an update right now. Uh, the tower is, but as soon as it comes down, I'll, I'll send you the link to that third one. Because yeah, it, 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 it is interesting to run them one right after the other, you know, to see, you know, the variance and everything. Of course, you never know which one's the more correct, but right. it, it at least gives you a ballpark figure, you know. Yeah. No, it's it's interesting. I you know I I had kind of something interesting happen to me. Um, I was out in uh, in New York, um, in kind of a remote area where my family lives, and uh, I was playing around with my sister's internet, and it was really really low speed. It was like six one five one six one. My phone was faster. I reconnect. I connected my phone as a hotspot and used it. And my phone was like twenty ten. It was twice as fast. And uh, I ended up having to work off of my phone. So I mean, you just never know. <laughs> you want to try a couple different options too if you're in different places. So yeah. So any other uh, questions, Dana, that you have? No, I will stop the broadcast. So for all of you watching, thanks for joining us. Yeah. And uh, you. you guys don't go away. I'm just gonna stop this yeah. a second. Okay.